and we're going to look at what to do when you're given something like this. Oftentimes, uh, you'll be asked to do these main steps here. Find the reserve ratio, find the money multiplier, potential impact on the money supply, and then what happens if we put a new deposit or if we have a withdrawal. Okay, so first things first, you have to recognize that required and excess reserves are sometimes going to be separated like this. Sometimes they're going to be combined. If they're combined, you better believe they're going to ask you to find how much of that is required and how much of that is excess. Notice here that we have demand deposits of 100000 No owner's equity, which whatever, we don't really care about that anyways. Over here, we have 10000 required reserves, 5000 excess, 85000 in loans. This 85000 is set in stone. There's nothing we can do with it. It has no impact on us right now. In fact, the only things that we're going to care about or look at are required and excess reserves and demand deposit. That's almost always the case. Ignore everything else except reserves and deposit. Okay, now let's take a look here. First, they're going to ask you to find the reserve ratio if they don't give it to you. So my reserve ratio, remember, my reserve ratio is the percentage of my demand deposits that has to be set aside for required reserves or reserves that I can't touch or I can't lend out. Now, if my required reserves are 10,000, my demand deposits are 100,000, then 10,000 divided by 100,000 is my reserve ratio, which is 10%. Now, I need to find my money multiplier. My money multiplier indicates the multiplied loan effect. This idea that when I give out a loan is going to become somebody else's income. They're going to put it in as a checkable deposit, and it's going to be lent out again over and over and over again. So I find that by doing 1 over my reserve ratio in hundreds, or 1 over 0.1, which is going to be 10. My money multiplier is 10. Every new dollar that is sent out in a loan is going to have a multiplied impact of 10. That's supposed to be a 10 there. Sorry about that. All right. Now, how much is that going to, uh, this bank have to potentially impact the money supply? Well, my potential impact is all wrapped up in these excess reserves. That's what I can actually lend out, and lending is how we actually make money. So my excess reserves times my money multiplier, so times MM, is going to equal my change in the supply of money. Okay, so my excess reserves are $5,000, so 5K. My money multiplier is 10. So the change, the potential change in the supply of money for me, Tierra's bank, is going to be $50,000 or 50K. Now, all this is pretty easy, and most of my students can do that with ease. However, where it gets a little tricky is when we talk about new deposits. So let's take a look there. I'm going to change colors so that it makes some more sense. So let's say somebody has 10,000 extra bucks that they deposit in the bank. What's going to happen? Well, first, I know that that's going to change my liabilities over here. I'm now not going to owe 100000 I'm going to owe $110,000. So 10000 in checkable deposits on my liability side. But now I don't balance, right? I have 110 here, and I've got 100000 here. How do I balance? Well, first, I know that uh, a portion of that $10,000 is going to be set aside as required reserves. How much? Well, 10% of it. That's my reserve ratio. 10% of 10,000 is 1,000. So my required reserves are going to go up to $11,000. That's one way of doing it. Just looking at a percentage of the new deposit. Or I can jump over here on my demand deposit to say, what's 10% of $110,000? Well, that's going to be 11,000. So my required reserves are now 11K. Which leaves me with some uh, excess reserves, right? All of the rest of that money, the other 9,000 of my new deposit, is going to go into excess reserves. So this is going to go up to $14,000. I'm just going to put 14K here. $14,000 are going to go into that account, the excess reserves. All right, so 1,000 of my 10,000 went to required. The other 9,000 went to excess. And now my two sides should balance out. Remember, I'm not touching the loans right now. That's all set in stone. I'm not getting those back for a while. Now that I have my balance sheet corrected, let's go down here and look at answering these questions. First, when that $10,000 is put into the bank account, what impact does that have on supply of money? The answer is none. They love this question because it's a tricky one. None. The money is simply changing where it's located. We're changing who has ownership of the money. But there's no more or less money in the actual economy 
because of this deposit. It's just going from one person's pocket to another person's bank account. What about the impact on reserves? We can see that required reserves went up by 1,000, excess reserves went up by 9,000, so you can answer that question there. Both of them increase. Now, what about the potential impact on the supply of money? Potential impact on supply of money, we use that same approach we did up here. We take our excess reserves times my money multiplier, and that changes my supply of money. My excess reserves are 14,000. My money multiplier is 10. And so this is going to have an impact of $140,000 on the total money supply when we're all said and done. Now, sometimes they'll ask you the opposite of this, right? They'll say, hey, there's a withdrawal of $10,000. What happens to the supply of money? No change. What happens to the reserves? They both go down. Uh, what happens to the supply of money? Change in excess reserves times the money multiplier. You use that same approach there. Sometimes you're going to have not enough money for your required reserves. They'll ask a follow-up question. They'll say, hey, what? how do you make sure that you have required reserves or what can the bank do to meet their required reserves obligations? And that's when you talk about borrowing from the Federal Reserve or borrowing from another bank. So that's everything that you need to know about money supply. I hope that was helpful for you.